in this session on distance protection of transmission line. In this session, we will discuss about the effect of infeed on risk settings of distance protection. Basically, this is a short video and in this video session, what we will do is that we will discuss about the infeed effect on the risk settings of zone 1, zone 2 and zone 3. We have already studied about the basics of these reach settings in our last session. In this session, a simple transmission network is being considered and we will explain the effect of infeed by using some mathematical derivations. The materials for this session is lifted directly from some of the open sources available on Google as well as from two transmission line protection books. First, the protection relaying by Blackburn and second by PM Anderson. So now, without wasting any time, let us start. This is the simplest of the network that I am considering here for understanding the effect of infeed on risk settings. These are uh, four buses here. M, N, T and suppose this is P and you have source available at behind this bus M, T and P. Now, this RM designates the relay at bus M which is used for protecting the transmission line connecting between the two substation M, N that is suppose the line M, N. Now, Z, M, N is the total impedance of the transmission line from bus M to bus N. ZNF is the impedance from bus N to the fault point F and in this particular video I am not considering any fault resistance. We will study the effect of fault resistance in some other video session. Now this source T feeds the fault current ITN and this is called the infeed and now we will look at the effect of this infeed on the various uh, resettings of various zones. Now, the voltage at the relaying point, that is at R uh, M, that means the voltage available to this relay R M will be I M N times Z1 M N and Z1 M N uh, denotes the positive sequence and impedance of the transmission line connecting between the two bus M N plus I N F times Z N F and Z1 N F means positive sequence impedance from bus N to the uh, link, uh, to the fault point F. Also, if you look at this bus N, then the fault current INF is basically equals to IMN plus ITN. So, your uh, voltage at relaying point will be IMN Z1 MN plus INF means ITN plus IMN times Z1 NF. And the impedance measured by relay uh, at this relaying point will be the voltage measured which is IM divided by this current IMN. So, if you divide everything over here by I Mn, so what you get is basically Z1 Mn plus 1 plus ITN times Z1 NF. And now this equation is very high importance in the risk settings. Basically what this equation says is that now uh, for simplicity just consider that ITN is equals to 0 and ITN equals to 0 means there is no infeed or there is no source available over here. Now if ITN is 0 then what is the relay measured by relay uh, Rm, the impedance measured by relay Rm in that case will be Z1 Mn plus Z1 Nf. That means if this infeed is not available then the relay measures the impedance Z1 Mn plus Z1 Nf. That is the total impedance from bus M to the fault point and which is what we expect. Now if there is any infeed that means there will be some current ITN. Due to that ITN the total impedance now calculated by this relay RM will be Z1 MN plus Z1 NF which is the actual impedance plus some additional impedance value which, is, which depends upon this infeed value. And now this additional impedance causes lots of problem in the resettings. How? Suppose there is no infeed that in that case the total impedance measured by relay 
R M will be Z1 M N plus Z1 N F, and suppose this value is anything. Suppose this is 100 ohm. Now, due to this infield, your impedance measured will be higher, and that impedance measure a higher impedance measured is suppose 120 ohm. Now, what happens is that in case if you see here, the actual impedance up to this point is 100, but now relay is measuring this. Uh, impedance due to the, uh, the effect of input as 120 and now it might happen that although your fault is in zone 2 or zone 3 but your relay might see a zone 2 fault in zone 3 and in that case there will be a delayed fault clearance or your relay might see a zone 3 fault in suppose out of zone 3 and it might not operate so this uh, due to this ITN or due to this infield you have lots of problem in the resettings now uh, if you remember from last session, this infeed have no effect on zone 1. Why? Because if you remember, zone 1 setting is 80% of the principal transmission line impedance. Now, this infeed effect comes only after this bus N. So, if you consider zone 1, in that case, zone 1 is up to 80% and that 80% of impedance doesn't have any effect of this infeed. So, in that case, the zone 1 doesn't have any effect of infield on its resetting. Now consider zone 2. In case of zone 2, suppose your zone 2 value, you are uh, for the same example, you are considering zone 2 as 100 ohm. Now due to this infield, the total impedance measured will be more than 100 ohm and in that case your relay might not see a fault in zone 2 but it will see the same fault in zone 3 and the fault clearance will be delayed. So, you, if you want your relay to operate up to 100 ohm, then what you have to do is, you have to reduce the zone 2 settings or in other words, the zone 2 reach will reduce or in simple, uh, simple terms, it is called the zone 2 under reaches. And what is the meaning of under reach is that in actual fault conditions without infield, your zone 2 will be suppose at 120 ohms. Now, because of this impedance or because of this additional impedance, which is due to this infield, your not zone 2 reach will be not 120 ohm, but it will be somewhat lower depending upon this infield amount. But remember one more thing in any case, your zone 2 cannot under reach below this bus N because your infield effect starts from bus N only. So, in any case, the effect of infeed is uh, nothing on zone 1 reach. The zone 2 under reaches, but it cannot under reach beyond or below this bus N. Now comes zone 3. If you remember from the last session, the zone 3 is basically the reach from the uh, reach of the principal transmission line impedance plus the adjacent longest line from the remote bus. So, your zone 3 reach is very high. Now, in that case, if you consider the effect of infield, then it will again increase your overall reach of zone 3 because of this infield effect and it might happen that your relay uh, will have more and more pronounced effect of load encroachment. We will discuss about load encroachment in some other session, but right now we limit ourselves up to this point only and what we see is that due to this infield, the impedance measured by relay at point M or at bus M is higher than the actual impedance that doesn't have any imp uh, impact on zone 1 reach settings zone 2 under reject but it cannot reach uh, below this bus n and zone 3 has more and more effect of infield and this effect aggravates and this will enter into the load encroachment area and we will discuss about load encroachment in some other session so to summarize your jet apparent becomes higher which is what we have already seen in the last derivation. Under each problem and under each is basically if your fault is at 100 ohm but relay is saying it is at 120 ohms. So, it in either it may not operate or it will operate but with additional time delay depending upon the strength of source and its position. So, this I have already explained. The more is the strength of the source, more will be the current ITN. So, more will be the apparent impedance and more will be the underreaching problem. No issue with zone uh, 1. Infield reduces zone 2 coverage but never underreaches the remote terminal and 
that I have already explained that infeed reduces the zone 2 coverage but it cannot reduce below this bus and zone 3 reach must be set according to infeed amount but with a stronger infeed the zone 3 becomes larger and there will be a load encroachment problem. So this I have already explained but the load encroachment problem we will cover in a separate video. Right now we limit ourselves only up to this point. In next session we will come up with some other topic. Uh, basically, uh, we will discuss about the fault resistance effect in greater details and the pre-fault power flow conditions and its impact on uh, zone settings or basically zone reach settings that we will cover in the next session. So, till now, thank you, keep watching and keep enjoying.